in this question most of the students do a mistake that mistake is not creating any problem here but because the concept is wrong therefore it may give you wrong answer in some other question i am going to tell you the mistake but the explanation of this mistake will be given while solving the question if i say limit x tends to infinity sin pi x it is clearly does not exist you must have studied this even in board level also that the limit of this does not exist as x tends to infinity that is when pi x tends to infinity but if i write this thing here also n is tending to infinity note that here i am supposing that n is natural number in this case even if this is tending to infinity but the answer will be zero because sin pi 2 pi 3 pi all are zero that is you can see very easily this is also tending to infinity but the limit of this is does not exist this is also tending to infinity but the limit of this is zero here x is any real number here x is a natural number that is i mean to say just changing the name of variable the answer may change in this question it is given that let f takes the interval 0 to 1 to r be the function defined as fx is equal to under root n if x belongs to the interval this where n is a natural number let g takes the interval 0 to 1 to r be a function defined by this expression for all x belonging to 0 to 1 you have to find the limit x tends to 0 fx into gx here i am going to use squeeze theorem which is also called sandwich theorem you must have studied this theorem still for clarity purpose i am telling you Squeeze theorem says that if f x lies between g x and h x, f x lies between g x and h x for all values of x in the neighborhood of A. Neighborhood of A means a very small open interval containing A. For example. If I say two, the interval one point nine nine two two point zero one can be taken as neighborhood of two, but neighborhood of two is not unique. Even one point nine 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 two two point zero zero one, this can also be taken as neighborhood of two. I'm saying that. If f x lies between g x and h x for all x in the neighborhood of A, and limit x tends to A, g x is L. Limit x tends to A. This is also L. Then, according to Squeeze theorem. Limit x tends to a. The value of f x will also be a. But if this limit and this limit are distinct, then nothing can be said about this. But if the limit are same, then the limit of f x will also be a. You must have studied this theorem while doing preparation for J. It's very popular theorem. and one more very interesting thing i am going to tell you in this 
that is if i ask you what is the value of 2.9 bar i think most of you will say answer is 2 but no the answer is not 2 answer is 3 you will surely ask what is the logic behind it that the answer is 3 actually believe it or not but 2.9 bar and 3 are equal they are not approximately equal they are exactly equal if you ask me the logic behind it i can prove that this is equal to 3 in two ways one way of doing this question is you know that 1 by 3 is equal to 0 point and so on you must have this is not difficult to observe that is take 3 on this side 1 equal to 0 point and now add 2 on both sides 3 equal to 2 point that is I have proved that 2.9 bar and 3 are equal they are not approximately equal they are exactly equal therefore the value of this becomes the value of this and the value of this is 3 I think you must have understood the logic behind it very easily otherwise I could do in this way also let x is equal to 2 point then 10x is equal to 29 point that is 9x is equal to 27 that is x equal to 3 hence I have proved that the value of this is 3 and now I will be using squeeze theorem to proceed further for using squeeze theorem I will multiply each of them by fx and I will get the result fx x square to x under root 1 mass t by t dt is less than fx into gx less than fx into 2 root x and because it is given that x belongs to this interval that is x lies between 1 by n plus 1 and 1 by n that is I can say under root x is get less than 1 by root n get than 1 by under root n plus 1 and this part I am writing here now this implies that 1 by root x is greater than root n less than under root n plus 1 and from here I can say that this is greater than 1 by root x minus 1 some of you may question that how can I say this is less than this maybe that this is also more than this the reason is it is clear that when x will be tending to 0 this whole will be tending to infinity if this whole is tending to infinity this will have to tend to infinity that is n plus 1 will be tending to infinity that is under root n will also tend to infinity and when n is very big then these two are very near to each other that is this is very near to this this is very near to this means 1 by root x minus 1 will be surely less than this that is I can say fx lies between 1 by root x minus 1 and 1 by root x and because fx is more than this here I am allowed to write a number which is less than fx therefore here I write 1 by root x minus 1 into x square to x under root 1 minus t by t dt less than 
f x into g x less than here I am allowed to write a number which is more than f x that is 1 by root x into 2 root x because I just now proved that f x is less than 1 by root x. Note that squeeze theorem is useful if limit of this part and this part are same. And before proceeding to the next step, let me tell you this thing also. We know that a to be fx dx represent the area under the curve. This. Here it is a and here it is b. Obviously, if b is very near to a, then this area will be tending to zero. That is, I can say, as b approaches to a, this whole will be tending to zero, whatever is fx. And now I take limit of this part as x turns zero, and I will take the limit of this part also as x turns zero. If the limit of this part and this part are same, then using squeeze theorem, I will say limit of this part is same. And you can see very easily, if I open this bracket, I will be getting this into this minus 1 into this. 1 into this will be tending to 0 because as x turns 0, these two are going on coming nearer and nearer to each other. I write limit x tends to 0 plus, I am writing 0 plus because x belongs to the open interval 0 to 1 that is x is positive and therefore after opening, I will be getting 1 by root x, x square to x under root 1 minus t by t dt and the limit of other part is going to be 0. And presently, it is in the form of infinity into 0. Infinity into 0 is in determinate form, you must be knowing it. And if I write it in this way, limit x tends to 0 plus x square to x under root 1 minus t by t dt upon root x. Now it is in the form of 0 by 0. In the questions of 0 by 0 form, we are allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. Many students name it as L hospital rule, which is not correct. The correct pronunciation is L'Hopital's rule because in the name H is silent and there is no any letter S. Therefore, the correct pronunciation is L'Hopital's rule. And according to L'Hopital's rule, we are allowed to use derivative in numerator and denominator. And for finding the derivative in numerator, I'll be using Newton Leibniz formula. You must have studied this formula while preparing for J level. And according to Newton Leibniz formula, I'll be getting limit x tends to 0. First, I replace t by x into the derivative of x. Then I replace t by x square into the derivative of x square. I'll be getting 1 minus x by x into 1 minus under root 1 minus x square by x square into 2x and this will be 1 by 2 root x and this is equal to limit x tends 0 under root 1 minus x into 2 minus under root 1 minus x square into 4 root x. Clearly, as x tends 0, this part tends to 0, this part tends to 2, therefore the limit of this is 2. And because the limit of this part is 2, limit of this part is 2, then according to squeeze theorem, I can say limit of this part is also 2. Hence, I can say c is the correct choice.